Welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at KZ Symphony. So Symphony is their hybrid planar dynamic driver. If we look on the back, you can see the uh, six millimeter dynamic driver is about there. Their full size planar, you can almost see the edge of it right there. So two drivers, this is their first version of a hybrid planar. So cool set, cool idea. The shell and the faceplate are kind of similar but different designs as they've been doing uh, lately. So metal faceplate, kind of more of a resin back. This one does have a shorter nozzle, and we'll look at that in a second. Compared to the other three, which I had here, and when KZ comes out with a new set, it's really hard to figure out what the shell size is. Is it the smaller one? Is it the medium one? Or is it the larger one? So this is CCA Polaris. This is CCA Trio. This is Symphony. So Symphony is a large shell. If those large shells in a, in a previous KZ sets bother you, this one may bother you as well. Because it's a large shell and it also has a short nozzle. And that's a combination that you don't see all the time. Trio is sort of their medium version shell and with a, with a more extended nozzle. And this is Polaris with the smaller shell with the same nozzle. So if we look at these from the back, hopefully we can kind of get an idea of what they look like side by side. So again, this is the small, this is the medium, and, and Symphony is going to be their large format. So yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely noticeable if you are, um, especially if you use foam tips, it's definitely a noticeably big shell, um, almost like Rhapsody. I'm not sure if it's the same size as Rhapsody. It probably is. But uh, yeah, I think the, the larger shells tend to be a little more um, uncomfortable for people. And um, yeah, I think this one is going to be one that I definitely noticed it after a while. So let's kind of start at the beginning. So what does it sound like? And I'll say it sounds like a slightly retuned PR3. And we'll kind of get into that in a minute as well. But I think it did inherit most of what I didn't find all that favorable about PR3. They tended to be um, definitely a little bit more thinner and leaner, and, and it's okay on electronic music. I think that worked okay on PR3. When I went back and checked my notes uh, on PR3 versus what I was listening to on Symphony, kind of similar. I had this kind of similar complaints, and, and it kind of comes down to that. It That thinner sound and that leaner sound tends to bring out the worst parts of planar timber, that thinner, leaner, more sibilant, you know, it just sounds, it leans into what people call planar timbre, right? The, the, the unnatural bit that you get on planar drivers tends to come across in that way. And their tuning tended to play right into it on PR3. And again, on Symphony, it kind of plays right into it as well. So does the dynamic driver help? Yes and no. I think it helps a little bit. But it's a scooped six millimeter dynamic driver, so it has less presence than the graph indicates, right? You always have to keep in mind with these graphs that we see so many 10 millimeter dynamic drivers. Those have, you know, people have a kind of a gut feeling of what that sounds like in their ear. Six millimeter isn't nearly as present as a 10 millimeter. And even if you look at Rhapsody, that was a dual, I think, eight millimeter. Those have much more presence than, than a single six millimeter. So yes, the graph looks huge and you think it's going to be a big booming set, but it's actually not because it's a six millimeter dynamic driver, not going to move nearly as much air as a 10 millimeter or dual eight millimeter. So, and I will also say the tuning wise, it's probably the opposite of what we've seen recently as far as planers go, the MP145, Melody, Clanar, Sivga, you know, I think all of those sets, S15 especially, all the recent planner sets tended to move into this direction of being warmer and smoother, less bright, less planar timbre, you know, moving more towards general appealing tunings. And KZ almost followed the line from PR1 all the way through PR3 with the same style tuning. And that's, again, kind of what we get on Symphony. It hasn't really followed the trend that we've seen in, in other recent planner sets. So that being said, I'm not going to dive deep into the sound and the bass and all that stuff on Symphony. I didn't like it uh, kind of in the same way I didn't like PR3. So I will talk about some of the things about the tuning and the set and how to get it more in line with some recent sets like Rhapsody is one of my favorite recent sets. I think this the little string of CCA sets that KZ has done recently have really landed well with people. Very appealing tunings. Nice drivers, nice tunings, very balanced sound. And that's sort of what's missing on Symphony. So we'll kind of head in that direction of 
how to get this set more in line with uh, some of the recent CCA sets and this balanced tuning and not so bright and not so planar sounding and something that's going to be a little bit more general appealing to you. So Casey wasn't a huge fan of the graph that I put out and I understand that we've been over this for a couple years now. Um, whether it's my graph or another reviewer graph, I tend to get a message from Casey that says, I hate this graph, I hate your graph, it's ruining the launch, and you know, it's the same story over and over. Casey tends to use professional equipment. Their professional equipment has some settings that make it harder to reproduce on hobby couplers. They have hobby couplers, so none of this was a surprise to them. I'm sure they knew what it was going to look like, but that doesn't stop them from blaming me for having a bad graph. So I get all that. So we'll start with their graph, and I overlaid PR3 over the Symphony graph. And of course, you can look at Symphony. It has this big bass, bass bump that wasn't, doesn't exist on PR3 because PR3 was a single planar set. So more conservative bass, but remember, Symphony is a six millimeter dynamic driver. So this huge hump isn't what you're thinking on a 10 millimeter. It's probably more just over where PR3 was. So then we get into the mids and they, they definitely didn't like this dip on mine, but there's a dip there. I mean, no matter how you cut it, um, Symphony actually dips out kind of all the way here and it actually shifts the peak in the pennant area a little bit later so I think that was like 2.8 or 2.9 PR3 actually peaked a little bit earlier slightly more fuller there and then as you get into the actual change in the treble of where PR3 was the higher line and again that was sort of this brighter thinner version of planar just didn't really play well to me it's definitely not my favorite style planar at all you know, again, it just plays right into the planar timbre, and that's exactly what PR3 did. So with Symphony, you can kind of see they took a lower route, and that's, you know, a couple dB difference from where PR3 was. So that was the right move. But it's sort of, again, it's sort of countered by what they did here and what they did here and using the 6 millimeter here. So I think this was the right idea. I think they definitely needed to bring the treble down. They need to continue bringing the treble down. If you look at where the 5K and the 10K are, these these 10K needs to be kind of way down here, like another 5 dB down there. You know, again, more like general appealing Harman style. You gotta you gotta dip this out. That's just a whole lot of extra energy in the upper treble. That doesn't sound all that appealing, and you don't have a counterbalance over here to add body or depth to the mid so you end up with thinner leaner mids and a really bright bit out here and they, they need to rebalance these two it's the two were too similar in, in that way so I, I can appreciate where they were going with that but it was sort of countered by you know the shift in how they did everything else so while it looks like a change it wasn't really you know the net effect of it wasn't wasn't all that different so as I was saying, they didn't really like my graph at all, and my graph sort of overemphasizes these these two changes. So the bigger six millimeter bump here, the dip here. So again, it's really hard to pull off any kind of warmth or body into the mids when the 300 hertz level is kind of dipped like that, or even on the floor like that. You've got to add a little bit of warmth carrying into the mids if you're going to carry that much treble energy there and that's kind of where the balance all falls apart here is that you know that bump doesn't really do too much because most popular music doesn't really hit too hard out here where you really hear it is is the part where the where it's going to add body to male vocals and add a little bit of density and roundness and warmth and those things you know it's just not there and then you end up with this brighter thinner you know, treble style, and you end up kind of where I was just talking about. A lot of planar, a lot of planar timbre comes through sibilance, brightness, thinness. So, yeah, whether you look at my graph or their graph, you know, you sort of see the same dip points. You sort of see the same amount of energy carried out in the treble. And you know, I, the graph wasn't was never the issue. The issue is that their tuning is hasn't really diverged enough from where PR1 and, and those sets started and where they ended up on Symphony. They need to kind of revamp that, that thought process on, on how they carry it out. So this is sort of the first part of the recipe for success. And I talked about KZ using their professional 
uh, measuring equipment. Their measuring equipment tends to use more impedance than our listening equipment tends to use. So if you were to measure Symphony on an Apple dongle or something that's low impedance, most of my sources that I listen to are low impedance, you end up with the green graph. And the green graph has a slightly lower base shelf. This whole thing is essentially twisted or tilted, I guess is, is how to say it. And for those of you who remember Zero Red, he included a 10 millimeter dyna or 10 millimeter impedance adapter, and that gave you sort of a base hump that looks like that. And in, the case, in this case, it's a 36 ohm impedance. But you sort of recognize impedance adapters tend to do two things. One, they bring down the overall SPL level, so that tends to work with certain amplifiers and, and people's ears. They tend to prefer a lower SPL level on their listening equipment, and I think that works fine. The, th the second thing it can do is actually change the tuning, which is what you see here on Symphony. So using an impedance adapter or using a source with a higher impedance, you'll actually get a little bit more bass here, and you will see a corresponding dip in the treble here. So this whole graph twists in a way that is very similar to what you see here, right? So when I say KZ measures on certain equipment with certain parameters, that's exactly what you are seeing here and why their graph looks a little bit different than either my graph or with other people. So I said, well, I'll just do what they do. We'll throw more impedance on it and we'll see. And it actually does. Again, you can kind of see exactly where this 5K versus where the 10K, this is kind of an uphill deal and that's not the way it's supposed to be on their graph. But when you look, when you add impedance on the red and cut across to 10K, you can kind of see the 10K is below the 5K exactly where it should be. And almost where you see this kind of 5K here and then 10K below it, there should be a downhill run to it. And that's sort of what you see with impedance. So not required. It, what it does is it just gives you this kind of a head start on lowering the treble down to where it should be and where their where KZ's intention was on where it should be. And it sounds better if you just throw some impedance on it and, and dip out some of that um, treble energy. So second thing to do, as I was talking about on um, this one, if you bigger shell, but if you throw foam tips on it, uh, that will actually give you a little bit more extension. We'll also dip out some of that treble energy as well. So I think foam tips, uh, I would definitely go in that direction. That's what I use too. It just gives you kind of another head start um, as far as getting rid of some of that extra tre treble energy that didn't need to be there. So the last bit that I did was this. And to really get closer to where Rhapsody is and a more balanced, full-bodied sound, and this is Rhapsody in the green, and this is the impedance version of Symphony in the red. So these are my EQ settings from FUBAR. FUBAR doesn't like to print the values and the dB values, and I have no idea why, but you can kind of see these are, these are zero level. These are, that's zero level, so that's probably one dB, two dB, three dB, or maybe that's four dB. But these are essentially almost one dB steps from each other. So starting with the sub bass, I actually dipped this out, not only because it was closer to what Rhapsody does, but there's just a little extra. It's a six millimeter dynamic driver. The very edge of that dynamic driver doesn't sound all that great. It just kind of sounds bloated and one note. There's not really any point to carrying over all of that extra sub bass energy. It wasn't adding anything to the sound and it was detracting from the sound quality. So I dipped that out a little bit and that just cleaned up the mids just a, a tiny bit. I would say that's not necessary at all, but um, while I was fixing everything else, I figured I would fix the sub bass for them and, and dip it out so it wasn't as um, bloated and annoying out there. I mean, it essentially was just kind of a fuzzball of sub bass that wasn't all that necessary. So the rest of it, just dip this out so it's just a cleaner version of, of mid bass and sub bass. And again, like I said, the six millimeter is way up there. It's not really like there. It's just kind of a, a tiny shift from where Rhapsody is. But what I did do is add a bunch of energy, three or so dB at 300. So like I said, you really need something here. So this isn't as dipped and as lean as it comes across. And KZ can complain about it doesn't sound like the graph and you have to listen to it. But that's kind of a real thing. You need to add a little bit of body. So male vocals 
have a body they have some you know weight to them they sound more round more natural more analog you just need a little bit of warmth to carry over to counterbalance some of the planar timbre get rid of some of the sibilance everything sounds more natural with just a little bit more body at 300 and that's exactly what i did there that's why and it probably would sound better on rhapsody too but on a planar set that is on the brighter side you have to balance the treble out with something and that's and at 300 that's the easiest way to do it and it's the most noticeable you'll notice male vocals go from a very fat a very flat thin to almost a rounded dimensional you know a a vocal that actually has some weight to it so exactly what that is doing there the rest of the mids you can kind of cut across almost the same way those two are, are pretty close and then the treble again i've already i've already knocked down the treble a little bit with impedance the remaining one or two db to bring down where um symphony is down to where the rhapsody level is it's just only a couple db and and you can just kind of whack those i did one db and that's that's fine Foam tips, impedance, get you really close to where Rhapsody should be in balance with everything else. So it's just kind of a small change. But again, you just want to bring this whole treble level down to almost where the Harmon is. Anything flying above Harmon is going to be almost a no-fly zone. It's just too much energy. And on a planer, it's a lot of energy. So just tick this down and you don't, you don't have to be too careful with that's 1 or 2 dB or... or you know, bringing one of these down a little bit further. These are just kind of a gross version of matching you know, about where Symphony is closer to where Rhapsody is because people tended to like Rhapsody's balance and I like Rhapsody's balance and adding a little bit extra here for a little bit more body to do male vocals right. That adds a little bit more depth to the stage. Everything has just a little bit more dimension to it. Everything comes together when you just tweak this a little bit. And like I said, it's sort of annoying how close they were, but they tend to follow this line from PR pass sets and don't kind of realize that they already have tunings that work well with this driver configuration in Polaris or Rhapsody or even Trio. And if they would just kind of listen to what the other tuning teams are doing and the feedback on those sets, they would sort of figure out that, yeah, that would have worked great on a planar hybrid dynamic driver so yeah i very much enjoy it like this i wouldn't listen to it without impedance or without uh, eq but uh as it sits now it's actually a quite nice set so that is what i got on symphony so thank you guys again for tuning in and i will see you next time